Okay, welcome, welcome today. So today I am just going to offer some reflections about sexual shame um, and just how that links into child trauma but also boarding school syndrome um, as that's often the subject I talk about. Um, yeah, so that's what I'll be talking about today. Okay, so I'll put a link in the description, maybe at the end of the video as well, to the video I did a few months ago, six months ago, about boarding school and sex. <clears throat> this one's slightly different. Uh, tomorrow, uh, on my men's circle, I am will be we're going to be exploring sexual shame and sex in particular, um, and also some of the teachings around you know, the Taoist or the Tantric teachings about sex. And therefore, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. I feel, certainly in the West, maybe more England, UK, um, America, this thing with sex is, um, there seems to be a lot of shame there. Um, you know, we have this thing of stiff upper lip, you know, we don't really share our emotions. And therefore, sex for me is very hidden. We don't talk about it. You know, we don't talk about it. It's like so many elephants in the room uh, concerning sex. We don't talk freely with our children. I mean, I didn't get education from my parents um, about sex. You know, I learned from, certainly boarding school, I learned from a boy a year older than me, so a 12-year-old teaching me about sex he knew nothing of himself so I feel that um, because we don't talk about it it's kind of very hidden and I, I certainly you know it was very hidden for me and then my own journey as I was a celibate monk for, for three and a half years and coming out of the monastery it was kind of learning having to learn about sexual teachings and I, um, yeah, so I studied different traditions from um, the indigenous tribes through Tantra, Taoism um, and I feel I'm kind of learning to heal that part of me um, but I do feel that there's still some an element of shame so I just wanted to talk a bit about that that um, you know, so the first thing I think with the shame is somehow we see sex as bad or we see, um, you know, touching ourselves or loving ourselves, you know. And I was just studying uh, The Art of Sexual Ecstasy this morning, Margot Anand's book, and in it she talks about this idea that really in order for us to begin the journey, we have to start loving ourselves. And, um, and I feel that this is key and I feel if we've had childhood trauma especially boarding school you know we've somehow seen that sex is bad um, we've seen that touching ourselves loving ourselves is bad that's what wimps do or that's what sissies do or you know if you're a boy a girl does or you know so we have we carry that sexual shame uh, that somehow loving ourselves is bad um, and she's just saying that's the first step, Margot and Anne. We have to start learning to love ourselves. Um, so that's been a hard journey for me, certainly. Since my 20s, I really hated myself. So it's kind of been about learning to love myself. Um, so, yeah, so I'd say that's really key. And I think, you know, when you go to the East, Eastern traditions, obviously there, there's a lot more western leaning now but certainly China um, Asia sex was just more of a natural thing there was teachings there and um, in India it's kind of just more natural talked about seen as just you know the natural part of being human being so yeah, and what happens if when we don't do that, we, we don't talk about it, we don't, um, you know, we give ourselves a hard time if we're feeling sexual. What happens is it goes into shadow. 
you know, in the Jungian perspective, it goes, we put it into our shadow bag, as uh, Robert Bly talks about. So, you know, our vitality, our sexuality, our aliveness, our eros, that's a natural part of being human. But if we were shamed at school, or as a young person, then we put it into our shadow bag. But it's a positive quality. But if it's in shadow, we don't look at it, what happens is it kind of spews up as addictions. So it might be you have a porn addiction or a sex addiction. Often if we don't allow ourselves to look at these things, they come out as addictions. So, you know, um, so it's kind of allowing for me, you know, how we start to heal this, allow these feelings of, you know, I feel sexual, this is how it feels. Not this is good or this is bad. I was saying this to a client earlier today, this idea of coming into, this is the way it is. I feel sexual, you know. Um, I feel the, yeah. So it's kind of just allowing that up. Oh, I feel some shame. And maybe tears come up and you release those. That's what I feel. That's okay. Breathing in. This feeling of shame has arisen in me. Breathing out, I'm taking good care of this feeling. Breathing in. And then breathing out. So, one of the things I found at boarding school was this double bind. And uh, Nick Duffel talks about this. This idea. And the double bind is, you know, we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. <laughs> you know? If you become, if you were very sexual at school, it was like you were damned. It was like, what's wrong with you? Are you gay or whatever? It's like you're damned if you did, damned if you didn't. You know, and if you, you know, so for me, what was mixed in there, and I think Joy Chevron really kind of makes this understanding really beautiful about certainly boarding school, is this idea that, you know, what we want as young boys and girls is we want connection with others. We don't have our connection with mum or dad. We want hugging, we want touch, because this is a natural part of being human. As you look on the depth psychology, uh, Jungian, you've got the lover, that's a quarter of the quadrants. A quarter of that, that circle is lover. It's about eros, it's wanting to connect with others. But that's not accepted at school. And therefore, you know, we shame ourselves. And Joy Chevron says that we want that connection and it might be sexual, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're gay. All we're wanting is just, oh, I just want to touch someone. I just want that love. Uh, and I certainly thought at, at school that I was gay and I shamed myself so much that this was the one thing you didn't want to be at school. And that's one thing I felt I was. I was like, oh! <gasps> It's like I hated myself because I just wanted to go away. But what was underneath that was just I just wanted touch. I just wanted to be hugged, to be loved, stroked. You know, um, and I couldn't get that from my parents anymore from anybody. And so therefore I was seeking it with other boys. Um, yeah, yeah, so it's that double bind. So again, it's allowing some of these feelings up to explore. So tomorrow night in the men's circle, we will be talking about this. You know, what do we feel about sexual shame? What do we feel? And in a safe space, just hearing other men, that is so healing. So, because it's like, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one. And because we live in such a taboo society, you don't talk about sex. When you hear another man say exactly the same thing and then another and another and you're like, oh my God, I'm not the only person who, who has this struggle. So, um, yeah, I think I'll just draw to an end here, but I think we'll just finish on the idea of the tantric, tantric and the Taoist teaching. I think sometimes we get just focused on the sex, but I love a teacher I know shares that... Uh, Tantra is like a, a meter-long piece of string or a rope. And the sex part is just one centimeters. And somehow in the West, we believe that Tantra, the whole, all of those teachings, is a whole meter. And it's all about that. But no, it's just 
it's just one centimeter so it's like these sexual teachings you know there's so many different levels to it you know there's stroking there's touch there's hugs there's you know presence there's so many elements to it and and i think we get confused in the west that you know tantra is all about sex and it's like no that's just a small percentage same with Taoism. Taoism, I mean, that's a whole way of life. Um, so certainly I found that helpful on my own healing journey is study about Tantra, about Taoism. You know, we have the shame and when we explore and go, oh, actually, I can be quite erotic. I can be quite sensual. You know, often when we're... Um, we think about sex, we just think about our genitals, erogenous zones, but the whole body is erogenous, that's what they teach in Tantra and in Taoism, and it's awakening, and it being okay for us to touch ourselves, and that to be okay. So, I will stop there, um, but yes, uh, some fascinating subject, really, sexual shame, um, and one we don't have, we don't speak about enough, so... Um, yeah, any comments, you know, please do uh, leave them below. Okay, take care. Bye for now.